Hello again, and welcome to the master's voice. I am celestial and you are welcome to this channel. I continue with the previous prophecy that is called the end of the way of the wicked. And in these prophecies that the Lord has started to bring through, he is saying that he will shake the foundation of secrets. He will shake the foundation of unrighteousness. He will no longer regard iniquity with the sacred offering. He will no longer allow people who are defiled in prophecy private to continue to stand in offices of public authority, offices where they receive, um, public trust when they are not trustworthy. And he says that this is across entertainment, sport, religion, financial institutions, anything that you can think of politics, it is going to come out. It is going to be, um, exposed. It is going to be shock and awe. And this will be the hand of the Lord working. He says, prepare the way of the Lord because whatever is being done in darkness must come out. So where I had stopped is that God was remonstrating with people who have come to take ministry offices and ministry positions, and he has not given it to them. He was saying that he, Yah alone is the one who gives gifts to the body, meaning not not the spiritual gifts, not the gifts of healing or the gifts of prayer or gifts of interpreting a tongue or speaking in a tongue or things like that, or even the gift of prophecy. There is a gift of prophecy that operates at the unction of the spirit operating in whom God wills for a reason, a specific time and season. However, the prophecy gift is different from the gift itself. The person who is sent as a prophet in the earth, raised up by God, specially trained to hold and carry and steward the Lord's words, speaking to things present, things past, things future, speaking forth things just like that, as the spirit of the Lord is coming up in them, this is a gift, the same as the, as the apostle or the pastor, the evangelist, the teacher is a gift. And so the Lord was saying that he has put these people in the earth. And if he has not called someone as a minister to minister as a true gift, that person cannot approach him. So that person cannot say, I too am a dreamer of dreams and I'm just going to come and minister. You're free to share your dreams, but you have to be honest and just say, God gave me these dreams. Because God says, I'm against the prophets who prophesy. They run, but I have not sent them. These are people who are going to find the rug yanked from under their feet. And it's going to happen from the very highest levels all the way down to the people who just have 40 people on their channel, but are doing that. So, um... He says, you cannot mock God and live, and you cannot escape the fiery hands of the ever living God. God says that if you are hearing the words of these prophecies and you repent, it may be that there is no fall for you. If you are hearing the words of these prophecies and you genuinely repent and recant of all the things that you have been perpetrating to people, he says that your fall will be measured. A measured fall is one where you're falling, but you've got a safety rope, you've got a harness, there's a, there's a catch net. It's not as bad, but he says, if you carry on feeding his sheep and giving, um, feeding them things that were never given to you to speak. So you're just filling people with lies. And I hope you heard in the first prophecy, those you love lies, you have your favorite people, you keep going to them. And anytime they are mentioned, you are freaking out and throwing your toys. Understand that in the last days, you will get the shock of your life you will find out that it was never about YouTube channel versus YouTube channel. It was about where were you sowing your spiritual currency? Where were you actually doing your spiritual banking? Many of you people out there, I'm telling you, and I'm not speaking just to the people who come here regularly. You've been coming here regularly by now. You should already have armor plating on your chest, some form of armor plating. Your, your armor should already start to get whole and sealed up. You should already have started to become edified, no matter the content, how uh, heavy the content of this channel is. I'm speaking to anyone who will find these videos long after I've left this space and I'm doing something else. The places you go to, your footprints are there. The things you have imbibed, the water, 
that you have sipped and drunk from, it's defiled and you have defilement in you. And it's not just a question of, okay, I've heard the word of the Lord and I'm going to stop. You need to go through not only repentance to say sorry to God that you loved going and visiting with liars and false prophets and false teachers and the sensational this and that. You will also need to go through a time of purging. If you eat down rotten food, saying sorry to God doesn't automatically cause you to regurgitate the rotten food. These lies and things that you have picked up, that angels are coming to pick you up in spaceships, that you are going to South Africa in the Exodus. So what South Africa has decided is that South Africans over there, I'm sure that they are just praying that a bunch of confused people are just going to show up on their borders and say, we're here for the second exodus because, because Carrie Ann told us this is where it's happening. You're a Christian in the last day. Somebody is telling you that angels and ships are coming to get you. And somehow this lines up with theological truth and wise counsel. And you're okay with it. Yes. Yes. You're, you're ready to do that. We're just going to land at the South African border. And then they're just going to process all of you in there to the Jim Jones Island of final destruction. Is this so? Let us continue. You cannot mock God and live. Stephen Furtick and Bethel Church, you are the kind I'm talking to. You will have a great and a public fall. The Bible speaks of a byword and a hissing. This means you will become an object of shock, scorn, and ridicule. And that is what I will make you because you have entered my holy temple and tried to burn incense When no one called you to do this, this is my judgment. It will come to you, Stephen Furtick. It will come to you, Bill Johnson, of the multiple books that say nothing. And it will come to all like you. Prepare the way of the Lord. This part of the prophecy is called human sacrifices in the church. Please listen, for the Lord is speaking his own things here. He says, in my day, the day of my people. What day was that? The day that Moses was leading Israel in the wilderness. And they were practicing out the laws of God. Fresh, brand new, and minted. There's a reason that it's called the law of Moses. Moses is the one it was given to. God says, in that day, I told my people, prepare me a young lamb, a goat, a clean bullock. This means without spot or blemish. You had to bring the sacrifice. Bring this for my offering. Bring me doves. Lay them on my altar to atone for your sin. Bring the sin offering and put your hand upon it. And when you confess upon the lamb that has no spot or blemish, I will be kind to you. I will remove the sin and I will let you go free for the year. But now I see another sacrifice on these altars of deep darkness human sacrifice taking place daily in the walls of the church. Church, prepare yourself. These pastors are defiling young children in order to spill ritual blood of virgins. And I spoke about this as far as the sodomy ritual part one. Prophecy was difficult for me. That prophecy was the first time that God said to me with my ears, or at least the ears of my inner man, The church of Jesus Christ is greatly gay. To me, this is a staggering statement that it has taken months to process. That the church is not somewhat gay, a little gay, is greatly gay, is filled with people doing this thing that I learned is called DL life, down low life. Blood is being shed of virgins, little children being defiled in the backside through the act of sodomy by the leaders of the church. God says this is happening in every continent where the blind are seeking the blind. Didn't say leading the blind. It's the blind people running after these pastors that call themselves Papa and Mama and spiritual leader and spiritual father. So it's written... You do not have many fathers in the faith. This is Paul speaking to Timothy, telling him, Timothy, it's really hard to find men who will pay the price 
to carry your soul from infanthood as a Christian until you become a strong and strapping man who can stand before God by yourself and next to your spiritual father and do warfare as he does warfare. God says it's hard. Paul was telling Timothy, it's hard to find a man who can be a spiritual father. And yet in, in many continents of the earth, including here in America, spiritual fatherism is just rife. Everybody's a father. As long as you can afford a microphone and some skinny jeans, you're a spiritual dad and the churches grow. And God says it's because the blind are seeking the blind. So the blind who are ready to lead are not suffering for followers. Listen to the words of these prophecies and understand because they exactly match the spiritual sickness that we are seeing in the worldwide church. The leaders are wicked and deceptive and they set traps and snares for blind people. They are seeking the undefiled among virgins to defile them and offer that sexual blood to demon gods who empower them to preach with fiery anointing and also to perform to perform signs and wonders in the church. Do you not see, my people, how you are caught like little birds in the net? Do you not see how even your sons and daughters have become the prey for these men? How the blood of the young flows to refresh the altars where the so-called pastors and prophets are really getting their power from. Do you not know that in the church, these men have two altars, the physical one that you can see with the pulpit standing there. And then when you go home and they're there, like, I just want to walk through the sanctuary. I just, I just want to spend time in the presence of the Lord. They are actually dedicating that entire property to the God that they really serve. And then you just pull up on a Sunday morning, Wednesday evening Bible study, Thursday ladies, ladies Bible study, um, Monday night men's group. You're just driving into this trap, repeatedly entering into centers of defilement, altars dedicated to other gods. And God says that they're watering the power of those secondary altars that you can't see with blood, sleeping with these underage children, Blood is a strong currency. If the blood of our Messiah is so powerful that it can bring a sinner out of spiritual death into eternal life, then know that human sacrifice blood, whether it's sexual or whether it's actually taking a person's life, is powerful in its own limited and wicked way. Ritual blood is flowing in the churches. All manner of human sacrifice take in taking place, including the kind that leaves people dead. This is one prophecy ago. And I read, I am looking at the dead who were sacrificed by pastors to pay their debt to the marine kingdom, to the water lodges, to the secret societies, to the brotherhoods, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, the Knights Templar, these men and women are parts of groups, Eastern stars, fraternities that shed blood to keep your membership current, just like going to the gym. They demand a payment of flesh, both for membership. You have to offer up flesh. This is usually giving up your backside to the high ranking males. When you join male and female, that's your hello and salute into these places. But then again, to refresh the flow of power and redeem your membership, you have to do this every year. My people are foolish, says the Lord. They do not love me or they would keep my commandments to be holy and to come out and be separate. But they love lights, camera, glamor, action. You get in that church and the atmosphere is just sizzling and they're like, what's up family? Can we give it up for Jesus? Oh no, that's church, isn't it? That's just, oh wow, I'm in the place and they just love on me. And here we are many years later and Hillsong loved on people until they just loved them into numerous sex scandals. All that love just coming out in documentaries, 20 years of legacy being dragged through the mud by questions that senior pastors can't answer. And so they just say, they don't love us. They don't love the Lord. They just want to destroy us. Do they? Or is it the Lord that destroys from your midst because God destroys destroyers? Those who seek to destroy and defile God's sheep, 
He will fight you personally. You will be on the news. A good talker will always fool my people. And that is why they are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And the grinding mills in the spiritual world receive their blood and bones to satisfy high gods of sorcery, occultism, and witchcraft, armor-plated demons of sexual immorality and lust are receiving my people's souls as they sit there in slaughterhouses with lights and entertainment blazing to keep them drowsy. Keep sleeping, says Yah, and you will be destroyed. Keep sleeping, and you will inherit the judgment of the damned. This is the word of the Lord. Turn to me and serve me only. You celestial, you minister to me at my request and my pleasure. Me and me only will you serve. Do not turn your face to the right or the left to regard any man or listen to any other voice but mine. Speak my truth without compromise and I will be good to you. This next part of the prophecy is Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was a Mason. Nelson Mandela was a free Mason, a chosen part of the Masonic Brotherhood. Whoever doesn't like it, you fight my word and my truth. He was a Mason, a brother. They call them brothers and they take oaths that they will keep to their death. And I, Celestial, am here on record that many years ago, there was a picture floating around of the Potter's house and T.D. Jakes was standing in the Masonic garb with something around his neck and the apron of the Freemason. Right now in 2022, you could pay gold and silver. You will never find that picture. But I saw it with my own eyes and I remember thinking, God, if we have come to this, then you just need to come and get us now. If people can wear this garb, this man is standing on the platform of the potter's house in the full garb. He had the little skirty thing with the little goldy thing, the girdle that is part of their uniform and stuff around his neck standing in his church wearing that. And I don't know if the church was awake, asleep, if they were there in the body or absent with the Lord. He stood there and wore that in front of them. And the Lord is saying, this man, Nelson Mandela, was a member of the elite, for it is the elite that raises up leaders to be beacons and masters around the world. So I don't know what it is that they are masters of. These are their inner things. But they are raised up to high positions from this Freemason world. This man served higher powers, and his reward was to be rewarded with the nation of South Africa. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord says, even as you die, if you die as a hero to men. So even if we put you into the ground at the end of your story, and it seems that at the funeral, you have died, revered, loved by men around the world. The Lord says, my spirit will dig you up and reveal to people who you really were. The Lord said, if I could dig up Ravi Zacharias and expose his deeds, I can dig up anyone posthumously and scatter their bones in the aisles, in the streets. They will not rest in peace. They will be judged in truth. And in the day of the Lord, this meaning the truth that I am speaking now, it will be set before everybody's faces so that they can know that when the word of the Lord came forth, they should not have cast stones at it. They should have been like Daniel and said, Lord, we and our fathers have sinned. Show mercy to us and show us the way to enter your holy rest. Now, if you're not in America, you will not know who Ravi Zacharias was. Ravi Zacharias was one of Christianity's golden sons, extremely well-spoken, extremely well-read, extremely well-traveled, and after his death, extremely connected to many women that he either raped or manipulated into sexually compromising situations. The man was paying multiple rent here in America, in the Philippines. After his death, he was dragged through the mud and his legacy is 
it must surely be a heartbreak to his wife. It was exposed that this man's ministry had a lot of compromise in it, but because of the gravitas of the man himself, and this is the problem with Christianity today, it is a cult of one surrounded by minions of many, one tall colossus standing in a church who cannot answer to the board of deacons and it's too great to be questioned by the board of elders, one man who rises up like a god above the people and then he falls and then the poison begins to leak into the rivers, the streams. Poison that people have been drinking without knowing who this person is. God says if he can dig up this man and expose this man after this man was buried in pomp and ceremony, then even Nelson Mandela is not safe. And if you don't like it and cast stones at the prophecy that the Lord is bringing, he says in the day when all things are exposed, that is when people would have wished they said, oh God, our sin is so great that we don't even know the sins of our fathers. Mandela was a mason, part of a large society that goes around the world like a belt. It is a choking belt that hangs many people, these Freemasons. And here are parts of their oath I heard the Lord repeating. I shall rip out the eye, they say. I shall tear out the tongue if I confess the secrets of my brothers. This is the oath you take to be a Freemason, that if you ever speak of any of the rituals that you see, they will kill you and when your eye is taken and your wife is thinking, I wonder what happened to cause him to lose that eye. She will have no idea that they took the eye as their right because you made an oath that your eye should be taken if you go and they start blogging later about what you saw. Your tongue should be cut out from the root in your mouth if it is found that you started divulging to your little same-sex boyfriend what you were doing and then he went public on a TikTok. That's how brothers end who break the oath. The Lord says, I am the Lord. I will rip out your eye. I will tear out your tongue. And then afterwards, I will put you in a stinking pit, a grave of fire and brimstone from which you will never be released. I alone rule the nations. You cannot take my inheritance from me. Remember the scripture that says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. So who owns the nations to give them to men? It is God. And he says that the Freemasons cannot take his inheritance from him. I am God alone. Release the word of the Lord. God says, nobody who is not at peace with me will have peace. I alone and peace, he says. I am physical, tangible peace. This is Jesus. He definitely is peace. Peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, he says, not as the world gives. The world's peace is temporary. The world's peace is only if things are going well for you and you have enough money to pay the bills and there's no fights in your family. The peace that Jesus is, is the peace from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. When he's naming the spiritual fruit and one of them is peace, the peace that Jesus is, is the peace that stands next to you. When the grandmother who raised you she was grandma, but she was the only woman, the only mom you ever knew. When she's passing out of this life and it feels as if your heart is tearing out of your breast, but at the same time, there's this pressure keeping you calm. That's Jesus. That is Jesus. The peace that passes understanding that will guard your heart and your mind in all the vicissitudes of life. The storm of life moving you here and there that betrayal, and now you don't know if it's divorce or forgiveness. The fifth promotion that has passed you over, and now you don't know if you need to get your CV and move on or just keep hoping for better. That friend that betrays your secrets. That ex that posts your naked pictures that you shouldn't be sending in the first place, young woman. Your nakedness is for the bathroom and for yourself. The vicissitudes of life, the waves that toss to and fro. The man is saying, I am your physical, tangible peace, not as the world gives. If you keep your foot from defilement and sin, I will cover you with my presence, which is peace. 
But if you love darkness or you regard iniquity in your heart, meaning that you want to hang on to these little modern views that are always already passing away, soon the current views are going to change and you're going to find that the things that people believe in are going to get much worse. It's going to be way different from it, from the way it is now. There will be no protesting over the rainbow life. The rainbow life is going to rule. God already said in an old prophecy, the rainbow is blowing. The flag of the rainbow is blowing in the spirit. This is going to be everywhere. You that wants to be straight, you will be the anomaly, the weirdo. You that is a man that wants to marry a woman, you're the one who's going to face public backlash and pressure because people will say, are you still doing that? That's so 2022. God says, if you keep sin in your heart, he will bring a sword to your door and peace will flee from you. He says, I will trouble you on your bed at night if you will not repent and leave the way of sin. And if you keep on in it, he says, I will carry you to, pe to where peace can never be your portion again. That's the grave. Please understand. I'm not speaking in any riddles or parables here. Clear for all to hear. And so the Lord has said to me, and this I say to you. I have spoken a word to you, and it will land on these people. I have given you a firebrand, a hot and burning rod, and it will smoke out the people. I will shake the foundation stones. I will go to the root of every matter and bring it out. And so we give thanks to God. We bless him as his eye continues to rove across this earth that he made, seeking out the righteous to show himself strong on their behalf, seeking out hidden secrets and iniquity, all this dirt in the police stations, all these cold case files, all these unfair promoting from outside when they're qualified people from inside just because you don't like them. So you overlook them and you stifle them. Gatekeepers, you will fall. I have seen you fall. I have faithfully proclaimed this word of the Lord in the hearing of even if five people watch this video, I have been faithful to say the gatekeepers will fall. The false ministries that are blocking the rise of people who could be doing so much more good with the larger platforms, they will fall and God will simply elevate. Saul, you will go down. David, you will go up. This is the word of the Lord. The false prophets that are multiplying here on the social media space like mushrooms, have a care for your soul. Remember, behind likes and clicks is standing Jesus. It's likes, clicks, and then, oh my goodness, it's time for judgment. Be careful. These are not games. We are on social media. It's easy to get fooled and think, oh, I can watch this if I like. It's my right. It's my freedom. Remember what I said with every time you come on social media, you are making finalized life choices by who is teaching you, who is leading you, who is speaking clean water into your spirit or dirty sewage pipe water. May the Lord bless you. Fear the Lord God, and only him shall you serve. Luke chapter 4 and 8. We give you thanks, Lord. We bless your name. We exalt you, Father, because you are faithful. Um, God bless you, and until I see you again, goodbye.